You know what would be creepy? If while I'm filming this video, those barn doors just silently start opening and a pale white hand reaches through and gives you a coupon for a trip to the spa because you're awesome and you deserve it. What is up you guys? It's me, your girl, your Casey. How you doing? Welcome to like part three of me trying to figure where to film. This might be my favorite place so far. It's brightly lit. I have blue behind me. Blue's the best color debate me. I got this handy table. And look, I got a putting green behind me. This is what happens when your brother is your roommate. My only worry about filming here, and it was driving me crazy in the last video, the more booktube videos I don't like video I did, it did very good. I'm very proud of that video, but also not kind of hate it because I was filming in my kitchen, which is right over there, and the echo was driving me crazy. So I'm trying to talk a little softer, but still loud enough to be heard. I'll get to see in post if I succeeded or not. So yeah, a couple days ago, me and a friend, we floated in deprivation pods for her birthday. Like you guys seen Stranger Things, they get 11, they get a kiddie pool, they get some water, they put the water and the girl in the swimming pool, put a bunch of salt in it and she just floats and she's able to teleport to another alternate universe. That's what I did, except my pod wasn't a kiddie pool. It was this cool little white coffin thing and it was so relaxing. I mean, I came out of it with my skin feeling like a salted fish, but when I was inside of the deprivation pod, it felt, and I'm gonna use a very bad book, to describe a very good experience, it felt like I was sleeping on a sea of stars. It was transcendent. And when I was in the pot, I was doing some book plotting. I was able to think through a scene in my fantasy project, Project Muddy Bones. That was giving me a little bit of trouble because it's like one of those parts where we're not really in the beginning of the book anymore. And we still have some questions like, what's this character's backstory? And now it's time to explain that backstory and I didn't really know how to go about it without it being you know like intrusive to the plot the pacing if it's gonna end up so info dumpy but I was able to work it out and I wrote so much yesterday I wrote just three pages but it felt like a lot and it was all like good very good stuff that scene that I wrote included another character his name is Kelt and he's not a main character he's a side character but he's slowly becoming my favorite character in this book because <laughs> he's just so innocent but he's also like so Pitiful. You'll see why when you read my book. Mm. I really want to do some more. I want to edit that chapter right now, but I can't because I have a little skit plan and I really, really need to write the script for it because all I have so far, so far, heh, <laughs> par, like that golf thing there. All I have so far is this one page of notes that I wrote at work and I need a lot more than this. So as I'm writing this script, I'm also gonna do the writer's book tag because we're gonna be combining author tube and I was about to say writer tube, which is a thing but not what I was trying to say. Off a tube and book tube together. It's a fun, simple tag. I got the questions right here on my other laptop. They're very simple questions. And like just reading through them, I can automatically think of a bunch of book series I've already mentioned before. So I'm gonna try to talk about books I don't talk about a lot. With this short little tag, as I try to be creative, let's see if my brain can handle like splitting itself, writing and reading and answering stuff at the same time. But first I need a drink. I'll take you with me, because we're inseparable. My, my house is a mess, but it just reflects its occupant. Avocado? You want a toothbrush? I went to the dentist. You look like an orange juice kind of person. I'ma pour you a glass. Yes, I'm wearing my pajama pants. I'm not used to y'all seeing my waist down. That sounded wrong. I'm not used to... Out of the way. I'm not used to this. I guarantee you every booktuber is either wearing pajama pants or not wearing pants at all when they're filming because it's usually only filmed from the waist up. One for me and one for you. I don't have another cup so you're just gonna have to drink it through this bowl. There you go, friend. You can pretend you're sitting across from me as we're sipping our orange juice together. It's like we're married. It's a little tangent before we begin. I'm currently reading an authortuber's book and I think it's her first book. It is Alexa Dunn's Brightly Burning. I'm hating it so far. Like I'm only 30 pages in and already I'm like, huh? So first off, it's a, it's a retelling of a classic I have not read, Jane Eyre. It's a Jane Eyre retelling, but in space, which, you know, cool, cool. Like I'm not gonna be reading it for like it's retelling prowess. 
I'm just going to read it for the fun of the story itself, but I'm not having any fun yet. And it's like the same issue I'm always having with these YA books. It's the female protagonist. She's one of those girls. So her main objective so far in the book, 30 pages in, is to be transferred from this rinky dinky ship in her space fleet called the Stat. I don't remember what it's called. Let's just call it Stinky Ship, okay? She wants to get transferred off of Stinky Ship, which is a farming ship. And she's an engineer on the farming Stinky Ship. She wants to go to a different classier ship to become a teacher there. And it's not a spoiler to say because it's on the dust jacket. She gets the job and that's currently where I'm at right now. But she's just so YA. Now that I'm thinking about this, it's probably just like a, mo a mini vlog. Look at me, I can vlog. Not coherently or entertainingly. That's not a word. But she's giving me those I'm not like other girl vibes already. <laughs> like she says directly to the camera or to us, I always like talk about books like they're movies for some reason. But we're in her thoughts and she says, ah, I don't want to be married off like a prized cow. Because in this world, universe, and it's very interesting, they have very short life expectancies. And she's 18-ish, so she's already lived half her life. And people are like, hey, when you gonna pop some babies out? You know, we're a dying species, get on it. And so she's like, I don't want it. No, thank you, I am not a prized cow. Meanwhile, okay, it's very contradictory. She's like flirting with every guy. She's like swooning over this one boy, George. She's literally dying and panting for a man. And I'm like, mm, you sure? You just gotta get that juicy YA love drama in this book somehow. But anyways, we're gonna get to the first question for this tag as I retype this beautiful mess right here. All right, first question in the first prompt is first draft, which is what I'm currently working on in my fantasy book right now. First draft, a book or series you've never read before. Hmm, Mistborn. Yeah, I don't even know what that series name is called. Mistborn, Well of Ascension, Hero of Ages. Did I say it correctly? If not, editor, correct me here, gently. I always thought that would be the first Brandon Sanderson series I would read, because that was the one that grabbed my attention the most. But no, I read Stormlight Archive first. Well, kinda. I still have to read the two short story books and Rhythm of War. But I'm also like, I kind of want to reread the series first because I there's a ton, ton of characters in the Stormlight Archive. Like you've got to get your eyes peeled and your listening ears open because most of these characters are important, which is good. I like it just a lot. But I was always told that Mistborn is what happens after the big bad guy wins. And you know, I tend to always want to side with the villain. So I'm interested. I honestly know very little else about it. I think the girl's name is Vin. I don't know. I think their magic revolves around like ingesting materials like gems, gemstones. I don't think gemstones, but something metallic. Some sort of alchemy doodads. So after I do my reread of Stormlight Archive, I'm definitely going to dive into Mistborn because that trilogy is completed and the first sentence of my script is done. I feel like that Spongebob episode where he spends hours working on his essay and then you finally see the result and it's literally just the word the. Second prompt, second draft. A book or series you didn't like as much the second time you read it. I honestly don't think I've ever had this problem because I only reread a series if I liked it. And ever since starting booktube, I've never had the chance to reread a lot. I've maybe reread only one series and it was a short series, Lockdown, Escape from Furnace. And I still came out of that series re-loving it. It's just with booktube, I always have so many new books to read and they're just sitting there waiting for me that I feel guilty if I ignore the new books to go back and reread a new book. No, I can't reread a new book. That's not, not scientifically possible. I feel guilty. So I'm like, hmm, instead of talking about something in a wrap up that I've already read, I could do something new. All those thoughts that don't make any sense will make perfect sense to me. I should be able to read something if I want to reread it. Easy to say, hard to do. I do remember I, over the course of my life, have attempted to read Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit multiple times. I would always start with The Hobbit, then something would always interrupt me, and then I'd always put it down, then I'd pick it back up again, and the same thing would happen over and over again. So not technically a reread, but I did eventually finish Lord of the Rings. Did not like it. <laughs> like, it's fine. Just, it's just too much. 
Like you walk in a forest, you're gonna get to intimately know every leaf and twig in that blasted forest. That's the one book where I'm like, no, I'll just watch the movie. <laughs> Next prompt, final draft. A book or series you liked for a really long time. My brain says to say inheritance cycle, but I've talked too much about the inheritance cycle. I was the biggest Percy Jackson stan ever. I am not exaggerating if I said I reread at least the first five Percy Jackson books at least 10 times. That's actually a very low estimate, I think. Also read The Kane Chronicles, The Heroes of Olympus. I can remember so much about those books except the final book of the Heroes of Olympus series and that's like the most recent one I read. But that was years ago too. But I honestly loved those books when I first read them. I thought they were so funny and they still are. Also another shout out to the Ranger's Apprentice series. It's a very episodic series. Like there's no overarching narrative. Most of the books about their own separate adventures. But the characters are really fun to get to know. Especially Holt to the like grumpy veteran of the group. Both of those honestly inspired us so much of what I want to do in my own writing and stuff like that. When I was little, I even attempted my own Greek mythology thing. I still have it on my laptop. Do I dare go back and read it? I think I might throw up because 13 year old Casey was writing that. And I don't trust 13 year old Casey. She, she was hormonal. Next prompt, killing off your characters. Something I either love or hate. Depends on how they did it. A book series that made you cry. Inheritance cycle, but I don't want to say it because I want to actually have to think. I mean, gotta talk about the inheritance cycle because there was one character at the end of inheritance and he was going off somewhere and he just leaves. And I'm like, did you take enough fresh water? Are you gonna be safe? Did you pack your tent? I was like his mama, okay? I've seen this boy grow over a decade and now he's just sailing off into oblivion. And I'm like, Will I ever hear from you again? But then the short story collection, The Fourth the Witch and the Worm came out and it like solved all those like protective mama bear issues. We got to see him again. I'm like, uh huh, okay, you're, you're doing good. You're fine. So now I don't cry in inheritance anymore. So that doesn't count. I remember just like one solitary tear going down my cheek as I was reading A Darker Shade of Magic, the last book, Conjuring of Light? Yeah. Oh, Lock Lamora. Dang. So I'm not a fan of the second book, but that first book, The Lies of Lock Lamora, I was a blubbering mess. I probably still have the picture here. Like, I might be giving you a thumbs up, I might be smiling, but I'm dead inside. Okay, I've been shattered. I wish that I could tell you, and I wish that I could warn you what exactly happened in the lives of Loch Lamora, but I'm not because I want you to read it and I want you to cry too. You will share my misery. We can weep together. So go read the lives of Loch Lamora. Next prompt, plot holes. A book or series that disappointed you. Okay, I'm going to use two prompts for this. I'm going to use plot holes and then I'm going to use a series that disappointed me. So first off, plot holes. Okay, so spoiler for the Hunger Games, even though you probably know this happened anyways, but okay, Catching Fire. Skip like a minute ahead if you don't wanna hear this. So Catching Fire, we know that PETA, he gets up on stage again cause he and Katniss are back in the arena and he says to the world in order to like elicit pity that oh, like we won our freedom. We thought we had our whole lives ahead of us and now we're in here and now my wife Katniss is pregnant. And so the whole crowd is like gasp. And Katniss is like, mm -mm. like she didn't know he was gonna say that. She's not pregnant. But anything to get an upper hand in this competition. So because of his announcement, the, that little interview session ends like that because the crowd starts to kind of riot. Like, um, hey, she's pregnant, take her out of the games. So it's a really chaotic night. But in the end, the capitalists are like, no, we're gonna throw Katniss in the games anyways. So they do. And Katniss and Peeta go into the games with their fake baby. But this whole time, even back then when I first read the series as 13 year old hormonal Casey, I was like, you know, this girl is like, she's technically like a public enemy to the capital at this point. And now she's claiming to be pregnant in order to like manipulate the system. Wouldn't this futuristic government 
do an ultrasound on her to verify these claims. And if, hey, they find an empty womb, they just like post it on Facebook or whatnot and say, hey, here's your messiah rebellion. Poor citizens, she's a liar. Like that, that would have like hurt her public image big time. Definitely for what happened in the third book. So that's a plot hole. That's always been on my noggin. But a book series that has disappointed me, I'm gonna say Shatter Me, that series. Mm, like, it's 20% disappointed and 80% just vexed. Like, how did you manage to be so good and so bad at the same time? Because it actually had a YA female character that I liked. I was digging the love triangle. I was loving the villain. But everything else outside of that little bubble was awful. The world building, the dystopian nonsense, the side characters who managed to be entertaining but so shallow. Like, they're just there. Like, they've always just been there. They have no backstories. They just, they're like prop pieces that you only pull out when you need them. Also, I thought the finale for that third book was so anticlimactic. Like, cause you guys know Shatter Me. It's now a six book series, but originally it was just a trilogy. So that third book ending was the ending for the whole series originally. And if I had been one of those fans who'd read it back then when it was just those three books and that ending was all I had, I would have been mad. <laughs> and I've only read the first three books. I have no like incentive to continue on because I can just like go ahead and like predict the plot. Oh, like our power couple, they're going to have some issues. They're going to break up then they're going to like discover and renew their love, blah, 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 blah. Everything else is irrelevant unless Kaz Brecker or Murtaugh burst into the Shatter Me series and just starts blowing everything up. That's the only reason I would read this book. Next prompt, writer's block. A book or series you never finish. So you guys know the Left Behind series. It's a Christian series about what happens after the rapture happens. It has 12 main series books, 13 prequel books. I meant three prequel books, not 13. And one epilogue book. Like that epilogue book is what happens like when all of our characters are in heaven, the devil's defeated, thrown in the lake of fire. Basically what happens after the book of Revelation happens in the Bible. Now, even though I think the characters themselves are like pretty much indistinguishable from one another, I, will, I really enjoyed that series. I kind of want to reread it because like what they were going through was really harsh. Like it's basically Game of Thrones for Christians. Like your favorite character can die gruesomely at any second. And I loved it, except when my favorite character died. Never wanted to punch the devil so, so hard in the face before. <laughs> so yeah, I read those first 12 main series books. I read the prequels because the prequels were all about the Antichrist, who was my second favorite main character. <laughs> but that epilogue book, technically book 16, I've never finished reading that book. And I've tried twice, mainly because in that book, which shows you what heaven is afterwards, it's very boring. Like just trying to remember what it's about. We have this. So the devil's like already been defeated in this book, but now, if you read the Bible, you know in Revelation it says he's going to be in hell for a thousand years, then he's going to come back, then Jesus is going to bop him on the head really good, and then he's going to be defeated forever. So this book is that thousand year period where the devil's in hell. So you think life would be like hunky-dory, right? No devil, no evil. Well, in that thousand year period, there's like a resurgence of satanic worship, especially in the youth. And so it's time for our main characters to like find the source of this new cult and like put an end to it. But the thing is, there's no stakes in the book because they're in heaven. They can't die. <laughs> so it was very, very boring. Also, one of our good guy characters, he's accused of something awful in this book. And all the other characters in our book, including our guy who's been accused of something, they have like a direct cell phone line to Jesus at this point, God. They can talk to God whenever they want and God won't talk back. So they're all like, how dare you do this thing? And our guy's like, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. And then Jesus in his head is like, you're right, son. I know you didn't do it, but Jesus doesn't tell the other people that he didn't do it. What kind of game are we playing here, Lord? <laughs> so yeah, one day I need to finish that. I don't want to, but I do want to reread 
that main series. Because Nikolai Carpathia, mm, mm, sexy. Very evil, but sexy. All right, last prompt. We got a book or series you'd recommend to anyone and everyone. I can't answer this. So many people are different. <laughs> I feel like in order to recommend something to anyone and everyone, it has to be so bland it covers all of the bases. Kafka on the shore. No, no, that would kill so many people's desire to read. You know what? To heck with this, read the inheritance cycle. You won't regret it because when you're reading it, I'll be holding a knife to your back, forcing you to read it. And if I see one little squint or displeased frown, I might bop you with it. You physically cannot hate this book because I'll be watching. So that's the end of the tag questions. And I am definitely SpongeBob because I've only written one sentence, but it's a good sentence. So I'm proud, I'll wrap this up. Then I can get to editing this and then I can actually finish doing this. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I also hope you don't mind because I drank your orange juice. <laughs> It's like the souls of hamsters. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, stay reading my friends.